Thank you, Sophia. Science say that in the future, the sun will expand and will become larger. Will it reach the Earth? If it will, what will happen to Earth? Let's hear more about this upcoming catastrophe from Janina Buenaceda, reporting for Science News. Janina? Hello everyone, I am Nin Benazeda, here for the latest astronomy news. Billions of years in the future, when our sun builds up into a red giant, it will expand to get in the Earth's orbit. But wait, what's going to happen to our beloved planet? Will it be globed up like the poor Mercury and Venus? Astronomers have been puzzling this question for decades. When the sun becomes a red giant, the simple calculation will put its equator or past Mars. However, as the Sun reaches this late stage in the stellar evolution, it loses a tremendous amount of mass to powerful stellar winds. As it grows, it loses mass, causing the planet to spiral outwards. So the question is, will the expanding Sun overtake the planet spiraling outward, or will Earth escape its grasp? K.P. Scruder and Robert Cannon Smith are two researchers trying to get to the bottom of this question. They've run the calculations with the most current models of the stellar evolution and published a research paper entitled Distant Future of the Sun and the Earth Revised. It has been accepted for the publication in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. According to Scruder and Smith, when the Sun becomes a red giant star, 7.59 .5, billion years, it will start to lose mass quickly. By the time it reaches its largest radius, which is 256 times its current size, it will be down to only 67% of its current mass. When the sun does begin to blow it up, it will go quickly sweeping through the inner solar system in just 5 million years. It will then enter its relatively brief helium-burning phase. It will expand past the orbit of Mercury and then Venus. By the time it approaches the Earth, it will be losing 4.9 by 10 raised to 28 tons of mass every year. But the habitable zone will begin much sooner. Astronomers estimate that will expand past the Earth's orbit in just a billion years. The heating sun will evaporate the Earth's oceans away, and then solar radiation will blast away the hydrogen from the water. The Earth will never have oceans again. We will eventually become modern again. One interesting side benefit for the solar system, even though the Earth, at a mere 1.5 astronomical units, will no longer be within the Sun's habitable zone. Much of the solar system will be. The new habitable zone will stretch from 49.4 AU to 71.4 AU. Well, into the Kuiper belt, the formerly icy worlds will melt, and the liquid water will be present beyond the orbit of Pluto. Perhaps Eris will be the new homeworld. Back to the question, will the Earth survive? According to Scruther and Smith, the answer is no. Even though the Earth could expand to an orbit 50% larger than today's orbit, it won't get the chance. The expanding Sun will engulf the Earth just before it reaches the tip of the red giant phase. And the Sun will still have another 0.25 AU and 500,000 years to grow. Once inside the Sun's atmosphere, the Earth will collide with particles of gas. Its orbit will decay and it will spiral inward. If the Earth were just a little further from the Sun at 1.15 AU, it will be able to survive the expansion phase. Although it's science fiction, the author suggests that future technologies could be used to speed up the Earth's spiraling outward from the Sun. I'm not sure why, but thinking about this far future of the Earth, gives an insight into human psychology. People are genuinely worried about the future billions of years away. Even though the Earth will be scorched much sooner and turn into a modern ball of rock, 
It's this early destruction by the sun that feels so sad. Again, this is Nin Donacede reporting. Thank you, Janina. And those are the finest news from the past 24 hours. Thank you very much to all of you who watched, listened, and cooperated. Remember, no news will remain untold. Again, I'm Justin Adala, reporting for News 1. Go. Good day, I'm Camille Pasco from News 1, and bringing you the latest news for the day in March 2014. These top stories. Major Airlines has said lost contact with its plane carrying 239 people, Philippines to upgrade Middle facing spirit waters. For our foreign news, Malaysia Airlines said Saturday it lost contact with a plane carrying 227 passengers and 12 crew on its way from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. Flight MH370 lost contact with the Super Air Traffic Control at 2.40 a.m. Saturday. The flight was operated on the Boeing 277-200 aircraft. It departed Kuala Lumpur at 12.41 a.m. Saturday and was expected to land in Beijing at 6.30 a.m. Saturday. Malaysia Airlines is currently working with the authorities who have activated the search and rescue team to locate the aircraft, the carrier said. The flight was carrying 227 passengers, including two infants, 12 members, and the airline said. For our local news, the Philippines is operating a Navy base facing disputed South China Sea waters to serve the extra ships being acquired to protect its territory, the military said facing. Navy spokesman Lieutenant Commander Gregory Fabric said the military put a 500 million peso or 11.2 million dollars port at Ulugan Bay, the Philippine military base nearest to the Spratly Islands. It is being programmed for capability upgrade. We need to develop it to house the big vessels of the Navy, he told reporters. President Benigno Aquino is said to visit the base on mid 20 to launch the upgrading, Fabric added. The base on the west coast of Palawan Island is a headquarters of naval forces, guarding the waters on the west of the archipelago. In recent years, the Philippines has been locked in an increasingly tense standoff with the China involving disputed groups and islands in the Stratus and other areas of the South China Sea. And there are programs designed to improve the capability of one of Asia's weakest military forces, the Philippines has been acquiring naval vessels to create and government described as a credible deterrent to protect its territorial integrity. The Navy has acquired two refurbished American Coast Guard frigates in the past two years, and they now live across the South China Sea. The Navy wants to acquire up to six more to guard the country's long coastline effectively, Armed Forces Chief, Armed Forces Chief of Staff General Manuel Bautista announced in January. In 2012, the Gregorio del Pilar, one of the two refurbished frigates, confronted Chinese ships on Scarborough Shoal, a small outcrop just off the coast of the country's main island of Luzon. The Chinese eventually gained control of the outcrop after Manila back them. However, the Manila government sought UN arbitration to settle the dispute, a move rejected by China. Last month, the Philippines launched a protest after the Chinese Coast Guard allegedly attacked Philippine fishermen off the shores with water cannon on January 27. Beijing rejected the protest. China claims nearly all of the South China Sea, including waters near the coast of its neighbors. This is one for today, and I come at bringing you the latest and hottest news. Thank you. to the artist just to have this painting. She did not accept it. Mm. Because it is not paid for a month. She was Diana. <laughs> it was one of the best things I've ever heard. Going back, Blooming Lady and Amethyst Constantia already had millions of fans. At a mere 1.5 astronomical units, no longer be within the house. Congratulations for four. Ano ba? Ano meron sa four? Sorry naman. And I, I'm. Congratulations to Taylor Swift. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm paid. <laughs> here for the astronomy news. 
and it's Chimila. And it's...